welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. In the days and months and years ahead, cities and towns will need to be thinking about what do they do as the energy prices spike for gasoline, for natural gas? What will we do with brownouts as our energy declines? There's an innovative new program happening in California that is addressing that. And it's part of the Power Down Project, and I have members of that project, Ellen Bickler, who's coordinating the project, Wesley Cadell, and Amber Mamakos, who are students in a project to work on this. Tell us what this is. The Power Down Project is a very innovative program of New College. Um, Richard Heinberg and Post Carbon Institute instigated this wonderful program. Uh, Richard Heinberg, for those of you who don't know, is a post, he's, a, he's an educator in this field, and he's written two books and another upcoming book, the Oil Protocol um, book, and also Power Down, which inspired this project. And the party's over when he started to look at oil, oil that, that we're going to peak our oil production and have to deal with that because we don't have anything to just take its place. That's right. So he started this project. What is it? The project itself is um, a program that's part of um, the practicum for New College. And what we're looking at is how to help municipalities in their powering down. In other words, um, municipalities are still going to have to deliver their services as the energy prices go up. And what we are creating right now is a template to assist these municipalities in assessing their energy vulner vulnerabilities and providing some mitigations for them to look at. Well, let's take a second. How did you hear about this, Wesley? How did you get involved? I first caught wind of the Power Down Project from Richard Heimberg himself at an informational session at New College. Um, when I had come to the college to find out a little bit more about the programs and what it had to offer, uh, Richard outlined it as a program that students could take part in and um, help municipalities take those decisions into their hands and really look at what kind of energy, how they were going to deal with um, energy vulnerabilities. So the idea was to choose a city and begin work on asking those specific questions on what it's going to take to, to work proactively and not reactionary after the, after it the might peak be too late and, and, and it might too hurt late. a lot. Correct. You know, a really difficult binds that a city could get into. And you, Amber, how did you get involved? Well, I started the school um, in January, and the Power Down project had already begun. Um, and it, it had just started running. And it was addressed to the class, and it was just, I, I found a very good um, project to be a part of, to be part of a solution for something so incredible as peak oil, which I had only started um, learning about in the last couple of years, seeing the end of suburbia, knowing Richard Heinberg was an instructor at New College. It's just, you know, an amazing opportunity to be part of something firsthand, work with other students, and develop a protocol for municipalities to use. So how many, how many students are part of this project at this time? There's about five of us right now. Um, four of us really doing the core research and another person is uh, doing the, web, the website. So tell us what the objective is in the project. What are you, what are you charged to do? What's your mission? The mission is, I would say, to, to really uh, deliver a, a template for municipalities to properly assess energy vulnerabilities. So the, the template, te what, what's the, in that template? It's not, dear, are you telling them, here's what you need to know in order to address this, or, or? Maybe more fostering, just getting municipalities and cities to start asking those questions of where does your water come from and how long are your reserves? How do you depend on fossil fuels for uh, to pump that water out of the ground? And how long will that last when uh, gas prices hit five and eight dollars, ten dollars a gallon? So are they to look at, you know, scenarios of five dollar, eight dollar, ten dollar gasoline? Mm -hmm. I mean, so you're looking at different scenarios, yeah, possibilities, that's right. and uh -huh. looking at transportation and food security and water and sewage and police fire and emergency. Just wait a minute. Let's let's go. Let's take. Can you take, can you take us walk us through these? What are sure. you doing in each of those top? What are all the topic areas? And what are you doing? What are you doing in preparing that template? Well, our our first uh, project um, was to create a preliminary report uh, for a city. And 
We did that. For a real city. Okay. Mm -hmm. Already. We did it for the city of Sebastopol, 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 Sebastopol. Okay. which is here near near New College. Mm -hmm. yeah. And okay. they have their own uh, board that's working on something, and we were kind of just creating mm -hmm. a little research tool for them. And so we did it on water and sewage, um, like I said before, fire, emergency, police, uh, transportation, and food security. And we basically took um, kind of an introduction into it, what it means to have these as part of your city services, um, what are some of the issues that are going to occur with the, the high energy uh, prices. And then we had a list of questions that the city could ask. Okay. And then we had um, kind of responses to it. What are some of the alternative things you could do? You know, for instance, um, well, I did food security is kind of my focus. And yes. it was, you know, creating community gardens, having gardens in the school systems and kids working on them as an educational tool, as part of their curriculum, so they can learn the process and then they can utilize the food for the school lunch program. And also with uh, how much farmland is in the, the county and how much of that uh, land is grown for food, how much is it is for animals, how much of it goes out of the county, how much of it remains local. Wait, how much of what food, food, the food, food. Have, mm -hmm. comes from outside the county? You know, just in, the food that's grown in the county, how much of out. it goes out oh, okay. and how much of it remains in. I would bet a lot, of, since you're a wine growing region, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. would imagine that there's a fair amount of export of wine oh, yeah. and wine grapes and so mm -hmm. on. And, and can that county even, or the city, feed itself at this point? Could it? Those are the that's questions. That's part of the questions. Yeah. Aha. Mm -hmm. That's Aha. what they, you know, you kind of letting them know, like, become aware of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, Wesley, what have you been paying attention to in that template? Well, my background's more in, in biofuels, and I had a, I sh shared an interest in transportation. So I began to look at just first off, what can we do to conserve energy, and when looking at transportation, and then efficiency. There's a lot that can be done just in efficiency in our trans the, the modes of transportation. Are you thinking of just the city support, city supplied transportation? So are we thinking of buses, public transportation? Yep. Are you thinking Correct. of what the city has to do to for the cars that are that are city, city owned official. for their officials or their planning mm -hmm. commission or whoever it is. So it's their fleet of vehicles as well. Correct. Uh-huh. And and is that true also for like your emergency vehicles that the city owns and that's fire true. department mm -hmm. and yep. so you're, that's a fair number of vehicles mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. provide services. Okay. In addition to that, um, adding such things as widening b bike lanes, making making downtown areas more um, friendly for pedestrians and local business, um, really trying to keep the the heavy traffic out of the city center and. Uh, other other things that I came across were programs like uh, car shares, where for eighty dollars you can rent a car for the month, and um, well, you probably get about one hundred and twenty hours uh, for about eighty dollars. That includes your uh, gas, your insurance, and the use of the vehicle. So this is a, is this a. a is this a program? Is this something that is, somebody has to institute? It's not there in, in This was a resource yet. that I found that had been uh, implemented in other cities like Portland, Oregon, uh -huh. in uh, New York City, in San Francisco, and I saw this as uh, a possible uh, resource for local cities should they want to adopt it. Be it whether it's a municipally owned co-op or, or mm -hmm. program or mm -hmm. a, a privately owned. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just an opportunity for another way to get us outside of our cars. Yes, yeah, right. Because I should imagine that, goodness sakes, for what? You're talking eighty dollars for 120 hours for less than a well, a little more than a dollar an hour that one could have a vehicle. I mean, when you think about the insurance and registration and gasoline, I mean, this that's a deal, mm -hmm. right? And even when gas prices go up, and that price will, of course, the cost will go up for those car shares is still a deal for people. Mm -hmm. It is. And it allows you to live without a vehicle and use that vehicle when you really truly need it to get your groceries, do your commuting around town, and then leave it for the next person to, to pick up. So there's some for it's a rental kind of idea, yeah. I mean, yes. scheduling kind of most situation. Most people don't need it every day in their daily life, but if you want to head out to the city for the day, you know, to get some things done or maybe come back or, you know carpooling right. events. So. Is it, it, are you enjoying finding new ideas that of can course. solve yeah. some of those problems? Definitely. What are, what are some of the other areas, any of you, um, of interest? We've got food and water. What, what about water? 
Is water it? is a crucial issue, and mm -hmm. Amanda is the person who tackled that for us. But one of the things that she talked about with water was, which is crucial, is what is going to power our pumps to get the water to us? It's something we don't normally think about. We just turn on our taps without even thinking about how the water gets to us. Mm -hmm. And she had some ideas, such as solarizing the pumps and um, other ideas like that. So, you know, so, so you have to think both about where, it, where it's stored, is there exactly. sufficient storage? Mm -hmm. And the pipes themselves, um, some of the pipes that are used to to pump the water are old. Um, how will we how will we replace them? You know, after we don't have any oil, or you know, the oil is very expensive. And so even even the materials that we're talking about for our infrastructure, mm -hmm. I'm sure, and asphalt for roads and so exactly. on, which is of course Repairing a petroleum roads and that. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, partly we will, will hope, I suppose, on new materials that come from other biological sources that can replace some of this, but it's not here at yeah. this mm -hmm. point, and thus will be more expensive. What are other areas? Food and water, transportation. What else that we have that people are paying attention Fire to? Fire and emergency. Uh -huh. it's, uh, is the section that our colleague uh, Hank Flannery worked on. And some of the great conclusions that he came out of looking at fire and emergency was the, the need to look into the, um, just the feasibility of how, where do our um, policemen and our firemen live? Do they live within the community that they serve? And very often, they live without, outside of the city boundary and in other communities and other counties, and there's a commute to, the, to that township. And if there's disruptions in gas prices and, and electricity, how will they be able to serve that community? Just to even get to their workplace, Correct. because it will be so expensive to commute or, they, or, or right. whatever. Did he come up with any brilliant ideas? I bet every city would want to know. Yeah. For providing housing, these officials. Uh -huh. So you have sort of city provided mm -hmm. or city subsidized mm -hmm. affordable housing. Because yeah. affordable housing is, gonna, is an issue all through California. Absolutely. Right? Especially in our area. Increases. Or it's in our area too. You know? <laughs> but as, we, as, as yeah. our population's increasing. Mm -hmm. and, and land becoming more valuable, um, much harder to get affordable mm -hmm. housing. And if they're gonna, I mean, what would probably happen is that the officials will want their gasoline paid for. So you might as well provide them with housing. It would kind of benefit in the long run to kind of balance out. And you know they're right there, mm -hmm. which also mm -hmm. means, of course, you have to provide schools, mm -hmm. services for their children, mm -hmm. and you know, along with the others, mm -hmm. in walking distance, yeah. hopefully, yeah. Yeah. or biking distance. Through the garden. Yeah. So fire, well, the fire and, and uh, law enforcement folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the area. crucial things about fire was um, they were wondering how they were going to pump the, the water, you know, for, you know, if there's a fire in the future, how will they pump it? And one of the things they, um, that Hank looked at is, you know, going back to how did they do it before um, petroleum prop. Is that what we do? We do, do it by do. How did we do it? How did how do they? Well, oh, I think you're right. Exactly. Muscle mm -hmm. power. Yeah, muscle, muscle power. power. Which means that if you're really going to have to do that, you're going to need a larger force, right? You're going to need mm -hmm. on a truck. I, I imagine you're going to need you're going to need Some a pumping crew. Mm -hmm. Job security. I mean, we. I, mm -hmm. I'm expecting that we will see more jobs coming out of all of this. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's part of your charter to figure out. It is. Actually, the opportunities. Really? We haven't looked at that aspect yet, but that's one of the future topics we are going to explore, the opportunities of businesses within this, because there are a lot of opportunities for um, other businesses. If, are there other areas of, the, of your charter that uh, other students are focusing on that we haven't covered? That's it um, for what we've done so far. Right. But there's other things to look at, like sales tax, um, planning and zoning, parks and recreation, and just trying to involve uh, different aspects of the community. So let's do, give us let's think a little bit about those things. What do you mean sales tax? What do you need to pay attention to here? Well, a lot of the revenue from the cities is accrued by sales tax, and so you know implementing a um, how are they going to keep the money in the city, especially with gasoline? That's a huge tax, and that if prices rise and people, you know, aren't doing it anymore, 
or just they're not buying so into they like the city functions. Reduce their revenue stream, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Right. So how do we keep the services afloat yeah. when gas prices are going up and we need more money, but where our revenue is going down? Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. And if folks are leaving the city too, uh -huh. that's going to decrease the amount of. Income. Is there tourism? Is that part of the Sebastopol economy? Yeah, it's part of the whole wine country. I mean, it's definitely a nice definitely. little So that nice may go down, stop. decrease mm -hmm. as well. For that. And businesses may go out of business, you know, that previously provided some of the sales taxes. Mm -hmm. But then new ones might come in So we as don't, well. we don't know. Yeah. That's, but they need to be thinking about that. It's just that something to look at, well. you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And other areas, I'm trying to... Um, well, planning and zoning, you think about um, building. And, and what, we've, what, I'm, what I'm finding is that everything is, in, is connected. You know, you have planning and zoning where you have to think about water and where your water source is coming from. And um, when you do planning and zoning, can you create a garden space within that and make it accessible for transportation? And, you know, it's kind of so everything is kind of interlinking. In fact, that there's also the issue of, of leaving at, at how much agricultural land that could easily be paved over. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I realize that Sebastopol, I understand, has a, has a growth limit. Mm -hmm. zone, but I'm sure that that's going to come up for questions, so that you still are leaving some land, they're leaving some lands rural, mm -hmm. which not every community is doing. Yeah. Yeah. In my and community, that land is really ripe for subdivisions, mm -hmm. which means we yeah. will be less able to feed ourselves yeah. from our mm -hmm. agriculture. And there's also trash, too, to think of. We haven't t uh, tackled that yet. That's one of the next things we're tackling. And that is actually provided by a lot of communities by the county. So that interlaps with county functions. And, you know, you can imagine that's a huge, um, huge thing to look that's at. That's a huge amount of energy. I mean, just t taking the yes. trash out to whatever, wherever your landfills are, is that, if that's even in your own county. Yeah, that's what I we're mean, finding is the landfills are becoming more full. Right. And they're having to, you know, transport them to Far, other counties. Farther away, which the, pr cost. the prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the issue that I'm sure that you're going to get to is there's a whole lot of stuff that goes in the landfill that could be salvaged, mm -hmm. exactly. that could be reused. So and This is a great opportunity to bring in concepts of zero waste and composting. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, an aspect that we didn't really have in mind is the, the existing contracts that cities have. And uh, trash was one of those that we you can't just change right off the bat. It takes, mm -hmm. there's contracts in place and, and so so they have to be thinking ahead and, and maybe finding whether people will do more innovative approaches to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've learned a lot in this process. Um, we got a lot of valuable feedback from Sebastopol about what we're doing. And we've incorporated that information, like Wesley was saying about the contracts. And we also have to take into account city budgets, too, because they're, you know, city budgets don't have very much leeway. But there are also what we learned, um, there are also bonds that they can do, for instance, for a solar program, if they find that it would benefit them economically to adopt a solar program. So they do some bonds to do, to do solar electric on the city buildings or the firehouses or whatever? Yes. Because, of course, there's the Million Solar Roofs Project here in California mm -hmm. now to help, oh goodness. help right. provide incentives to Subsidies do that. Subsidies uh -huh. as well. Uh -huh. Okay. So it sounds like you're unearthing a lot of opportunities here for mm -hmm. moving towards a, a more sustainable approach to mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So I imagine then that you've worked with, you've had to get information from the city itself mm -hmm. to know what the status of things is now. That's kind of our next step, is to make create an assessment tool mm -hmm. and to use city managers and city officials and uh, to gather that information that's already there. So if, uh, if, what's the next step? You're going to gather more information from the officials. Then what, then what are you going to do from there? Come May 19th, we're going to submit the first draft of our municipal report to a conference of elected officials and municipality leaders um, at a conference on May 19th in Santa Rosa and Petaluma. Mm -hmm. In Petaluma, where we'll, they will be given a chance to look over these issues and, and to look a little bit deeper into their community needs and uh, start asking themselves those questions of, uh, that we've laid out for them. Uh -huh. And so what, what uh, when you've done that, when you have given this report back to this, this city, sort of your first model, your first prototype, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. 
will you be doing more work with that city? Is there a next step in the process for creating this? Or I'm looking to the point where you have a template that's usable after you've, you know, streamlined this, if you will, mm -hmm. and gotten the bugs out of it, that other cities can use and counties can use. That's, is that where that's, we're headed, that's, I hope? That's the goal. That's the long-term goal is to have something that, because like the May 19th is, you know, officials from Humboldt, from Petaluma, which is a bigger city, so it's kind of creating, you know, a scale of where we could use it. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal in the long run, is to create this template for everybody to use. We will have that available on May 19th, the, the first template. The first draft. We're incorporating mm -hmm. our information from talking to city officials, from the feedback we got from doing the report in Sebastopol. And we are going ahead and creating this first template. It won't be complete but we will have um, certain topics on that, and then we'll expand from there, and we will make all this available on our website, which, which, is, is. which will be released um, pretty soon. It's www.powerdownproject.com. Okay, because I can imagine, I mean, you're doing good for spade work mm -hmm. for, for many municipalities, and at least if all your template does is raise the questions, mm -hmm. raise the areas to pay attention to, is anybody doing any work in the area of emergency preparedness? I mean, we, we do emergency planning for earthquakes in California, mm -hmm. certainly, and I hope Kansas does them for tornado tornadoes. <laughs> um, and by now, Louisiana will be thinking some more about hurricanes. Yeah. But do you know whether, is that part of your charter to look at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is any, is it's, that, it's part of the, when you're talking to them, it's kind of like the first thing you look at so that we don't go and do things all over again. That you know, do they do you have a plan, and what is the plan like for water and sewage? Like what mm -hmm. happens? Like recently, there was a flood, and the sewage got backed up into the river because I think the electricity went off, mm -hmm. and oh. so you know, that's kind of like the foreground of it all is. Well, if you realize that flooding is causing that, and because mm -hmm. flooding can happen, or the power, the plants, the electricity going down, because we don't have enough power mm -hmm. generation. That doesn't sound too fun, having the sewage all backed up. I <laughs> no. mean, yeah. so, you, so part of what you'll be thinking, or they hopefully will be thinking about, mm -hmm. is a contingency plan for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. What about private, I'm guessing, private institutions like hospitals or health care? Is that any part of what you're going to think about? This is going to be about? better, probably better outlined in our community assessment. Um, after this initial template to be handed to the municipal leaders, we're going to launch into the, the second part, which will be gathering more information about the community needs and what that will inquire. Mm -hmm. And Amber touched on a little bit about uh, parks and rec and um, sales tax. Even though that, that does go along with municipalities, it's um, local businesses. So that'll be the next Next so next step. phase yeah. is we community actually assess hospitals are included in that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, what about parks and rec? What do they? What is that? What do they have to do with all of this? Well, I mean, you could utilize those systems uh, for growing community gardens. Uh -huh. um, they have, uh, you know, workers that drive around in trucks all day long, mm -hmm. kind of changing, you know, the way they're using their energy and. So they have to look at things like can they move to hybrids or mm -hmm. electric cars or bicycles mm -hmm. for the meter maid <laughs> or whatever. Uh -huh. yeah. So in your community approach to things then you'd be looking at private individuals or homes or is that, that's, yeah, that would be another phase? Mm. We're more well, looking at, at the, the, the things that affect the community. As a whole. Mm -hmm. As a whole. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. And that will bring up hopefully awareness within them to create more neighborhood based, you know, groups. And we have a goal for releasing this on September 29th, which is also going to be a conference that will follow the Energy Vulnerability Summit for the elected officials, where we're inviting businesses and then the general public as well. And we'll have that available. Um, at excellent, that time. excellent. So you're moving this along pretty well. It's it's a timely. I mean, it's time. Mm -hmm. we, yes. need, we need that help, and, and it's great to have a group of people that are paying attention to it because that need is huge. Are you planning? I mean, when can we rent a student, borrow a template? You know, <laughs> what? When can we? Will that be possible? 
that is the next step. What we want to do is make our students available as interns to municipalities. And I think that's the most exciting thing about this project for everybody involved. Yeah, because the information won't die, in a sense, because you, you need, I mean, to have somebody who knows what to do and has a template to work with, mm -hmm. I can imagine that, I mean, our municipalities will pay to have that kind of help to speed, speed that process mm -hmm. along. So students who want to become part of this, I mean, I imagine, will this continue growing? This after will you do continue no growing. So where would, they, where would they turn if they want to become part of this project? They could um, contact New College. New about College it. of California. New College of California, or they could contact the Power Down Project. Okay. Um, Post Carbon also has all the information. What's on the website this. for Post Carbon? The website for Post Carbon is www.postcarbon.org. Okay, okay. Any last thoughts in our last minute here? Anything we didn't cover? Hmm. I'll ask you a question. How does it feel? How does it feel in working that? Are you sort of up to your ears in facts, or what's yeah, it, it like? It's enriching. I have to definitely say it's it's fulfilling, and and though it is, uh, it's important work that needs to be done, and we're just the first session of students to to come through this program, and and I feel I have to say I feel very fortunate to be one mm -hmm. of. Uh, at the beginning of this program and looking forward to getting other students on board and, and continuing this work. Yeah, it's very, it's very empowering to be part of it and to know that we are doing something that'll be uh, kind of, you know, like a, a template, a paper, the handout that people can use and to have been part of the whole project is great, the whole process of it. Mm. And I think it's just so gratifying. And what I find the most exciting is are the students and their passion for this project. It just, um, they have done incredible work in this project. And they have wonderful insight into where to go next. And I see it constantly evolving with as new information becomes available. Actually, it's, it's, you know, it's our next generation, in a sense, you're finding out how you're going to run the world, you know, in a, in a very different energy future than we have. So I think what we ought to do is end with the power down, power down. cheer. All right, all right. So go. Let's go. How do we do this? <laughs> well. We, go. Well, well how are you <laughs> not? Okay. We, we are, are the power down. down. We are the power down. We are the power down. <laughs> Janet Donaldson, thanks for joining us on Peak Moment, Community Responses to a Changing Energy Future. <laughs>